ADHD Rewired, episode 451. This is the podcast for those of us with really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. I'm Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker by training and a coach by design. I'm your host and I have ADHD. ADHD Rewired is a more than just a podcast. We are a community. We are wired for connection and you are not alone. Go to ADHDrewired.com to learn how you can join us in our free and secret Facebook group. Get additional resources for every episode, including links to any resources we mentioned on today's show. You can support us on Patreon, sign up for our email newsletter. You can request podcast postcards to distribute to your clients and support groups. Learn all about our award-winning coaching and accountability groups. You can co-work with us in our adult study hall virtual membership community. You can do all of these things by going to our website at ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. Today's guest is Mike Lakeys. Mike has been a business coach and sales trainer for 15 years and it runs the business together with his non-ADHD, but not neurotypical wife. He has 25 years of experience in sales and got diagnosed with ADHD at age 43, which turned his life upside down. Today, Mike is here to talk about how to structure a business around your ADHD. Mike, welcome to the podcast. I'm happy to be here. Well, so everyone else, you are, you're in Germany right now? Uh, I am German, as you probably can tell from my accent, but I live or we live in Cyprus. Okay. So you and I first met when you were a uh, member of uh, one of our coaching groups many, many years ago. How, how long ago was it? It was in 2017, actually. All right. So you were probably like in the arc single digits. Yeah, in season nine. Season nine. <laughs> All right. Cool. So since then, you've been building this business. So let's let's kind of dive right into this. So were you in business before you started your own business? Uh, yes, a couple of times. <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I founded my first business together with a, a colleague during college time. Okay. And uh, I left the business afterwards, which was a big mistake because today it's one of the largest SAP partners in Germany. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one of those decisions in your life, you know. And then I actually started two other business. Uh, then I started a sales career. But after uh, my sales career, I started two other business and two f- these two failed. Yeah, one was an e-commerce business. The other was kind of a consulting business. What? doesn't kill you, just makes you a bit wiser. If, if that is, if you're looking for the lessons. Yeah, if you're looking for the lessons. And and actually, this business that we have today was founded by my wife. And this month, exactly this month, 20 years ago. Oh. And uh, I joined I joined a while later. And together, we established all the sales training and, and business coaching part. This is the journey. And so you were diagnosed at 43. And, and how old are you now? I'm 50. Okay. So seven years ago, you were diagnosed. Mm-hmm. You've been in business uh, working with uh, with your wife for about 15 years. What brought you to that diagnosis? What was going on? Oh, this is kind of another, I can say, funny story. <laughs> well, when ADHD is part of your marriage, you have these kind of struggles in your life and... Uh, because of the struggles, my wife thought for a while that she might have ADHD. So she bought a book about ADHD and marriage by Melissa Orloff. Okay. And um, she read through it and uh, she recognized, no, I'm not having ADHD. But then during an argument, I thought maybe it's a good idea to grab this book just if I could find something, some advice to deal with the situation. And I read through the first couple of pages and I immediately realized that's me, Mm. what Melissa is talking about. That's exactly me. And this was the start. And a short while after I got my diagnosis, which approved my, uh, my guess. And, um, it was not easy that time because it destroyed my whole self image. Mm. It's, you know, uh, 
I didn't really struggle in in school. I was good in school. I was amongst the best in college. I didn't have any problems with learning or or something like that. I was always good in that. And um, now realizing that I have ADHD and at this time, I didn't really know what it meant, to be honest, was kind of a, of a bummer. So what, what, in what ways was ADHD kind of showing up for you? Um, a lot of times it was struggling with, with uh, emotions, you know, impulsive behavior, shouting out when I'm, you know, and time blindness. When I thought I forgot this task for, let's say, a week, my wife looked at the notes a week, nine months. <laughs> and uh, my wife always says I was struggling with uh, starting a project and finishing the last 5% of a project. Those are the two hardest and, parts of any uh, project. <laughs> yes, exactly. And when I, I, I didn't notice at this time, but when I don't get the information out of my head immediately, I tend to forget the things. Mm. When you have a business and this kind of struggles, this kind of problems, it doesn't make life much easier, you know? Yeah. And uh, in the beginning, I I didn't really know how to deal with it because the diagnosis, the the process of the diagnosis in Germany is rather like in a developing country. How so? You don't get much help. You don't get much healthy advice of good advice. I must say... uh, I, I worked with uh, two coaches rather soon, and and uh, but, but they they didn't really help. I mean, they got the advice like just do it and and, and so on. And and everyone with ADHD knows no 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 that, that that's not how it works. <laughs> that, that's it's a problem of ADHD. You know? Do they suggest um, that you should maybe just consider writing a to do list? And have you considered a calendar? <laughs> Yeah, but what I didn't really get is that not only the ADHD was the problem, it was a problem with my identity as well, because I wasn't able to get at grips to to accept ADHD. What did that mean for you? Um, accepting ADHD, it's like, for me, it's owning it, you know? I have ADHD and um, it's not good. It's not bad. It's, it's ADHD and it's me and it's, it's, it's okay. You know, I, I never bought really into this ADHD is a gift kind of thing. Yeah. I think that you and I kind of agree on that is it's, if it's a gift, where's the, where's the gift rece- uh, receipt? Cause it's, it's a pain. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It can be, but I learned a lot from it. And um, the good thing is, it forced me when I was finally able to, to, to accept it, it forced me to think in different ways, to approach, especially work, to approach business in different ways. I mean, a huge part of it was, to be honest, your ADHD rewired coaching group. This was a huge part of it because seeing all the other people's there and, and having the, the, the possibility to to exchange with them, to talk about your problems uh, openly and to see young people, old people in all kinds of professions. It was a really healthy experience. And this was kind of a start for me to get at grips to, to, to be able to accept my ADHD. I, you know? I think, I, I don't know how I actually remember this, but I think that I remember in our last session of group, I remember you saying that one of the things you learned from being in group was that your problems actually weren't that special or unique. Do you remember saying that? Mm, yes, 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 absolutely. Because when we think we're the only ones going, it's, that's a, well, one, it, it in our minds, it makes the problem that much more challenging because if we're the only ones going through something, well, what the hell are we supposed to do about that, right? Yeah. But when we realize, oh, there's lots of other people who are kind of going through these similar struggles and they're kind of getting through this stuff and figuring these things out. So can I. Yeah, it gives you a different perspective. Uh, on your own and on your problems. And uh, sometimes that's all you need to, to find a solution. So find a way. When we're looking at in ADHD, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there that says, you know, we know that a lot of people with ADHD are entrepreneurs. 
I don't yes. know if we actually know if that's actually like scientifically a, a valid statement. Like it, it makes sense and some, you know, in some regards that like maybe, but just because something might make sense in, intuitively doesn't mean that's accurate. So I do think that there's a lot of people who come in contact with people like myself who do, you know, ADHD coaching who are entrepreneurs. I think that we still don't know if is there an overrepresentation of ADHD in entrepreneurship. I personally love being a, a self-employed, having my own business as a person with ADHD, because it's if if I mess up the rules, there were only my rules that I messed up versus I messed up somebody else's rules that I either didn't understand or got late or behind on something, right? So for me, it's like, oh, I can completely build this business in a way that works for me. And it sounds like you've done the same thing. Yes, 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 exactly. I don't know if ADHD makes you well. There, there is actually a study uh, from. It's not. It's not that old. It's. It's two, three years old. A study from France. They studied um, over eight hundred small business owners in France, and it seems that if you have ADHD, your tendency to become an entrepreneur is higher than with a neurotypical person. So they. They are more prone to this idea of becoming your own boss. But the question for me is always, does it mean that you are a better entrepreneur with ADHD? And that's not necessarily true. I mean, you're probably more of a risk taker with ADHD. That is true. And that is what the, was the study approved. But all the other things, well, not so much. And uh, you have to be able or you have to learn how to adapt and how to ban things around you. Because what I find is people with ADHD, they want to be free. You know, they don't want to be part in a, in, in a fixed corporate kind of structure. They want to break out. And that's... Um, well, that's absolutely reasonable. That, that That's how most people start a business. But they think when they found a business to do a job, a job that they did before in a corporate environment, that this kind of thing sets them free. But this is a trap. If, because have you ever heard, not a my, case. Have you ever heard the, uh, the, the, the adage that uh, entrepreneurs are the only group of people who would work 80 hours a week just to avoid a 40 hour work week. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's kind of that. <laughs> um, because the first thing we need to understand is having a job is completely different from having a business mm -hmm. who does the job or who sells this job. And um, yeah, uh, and, and this is what most people struggle with and uh, with ADHD. Of course, you have this tendency, you, you, you are looking for more freedom. You, you want to break out the structure, but in a business, you need to have the structure in order to be creative, in order for your business to be able to perform. This is where these two things, ADHD and business, don't fit very well together. But when you are able to find ways around that, when you are able to band the business around your ADHD needs, then it's going to be fun, actually. What I want to do, Mike, is take a quick break. When we come back from break, I want to uh, dive in. I want to hear some specific things on how you bend your business to your ADHD. Yes. So we will be right back. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from ARC, ADHD Rewired Coaching. Learn more about our award-winning online coaching and accountability groups at coachingrewired.com. This group is like a scaffolding for us to move from intention to action. And the scaffolding is above the, the muck and the stories and everything else. If you have a scaffolding in a building, you're renovating it. You could be renovating or renewing it. And that building is us. This is what it feels like to join this group. In a world of many kinds of boats, I have tried to be on a crew with specific skills that were never useful. I would try to help, but either slow down the boat, add loads of work for myself or someone else. And then I joined this group. We are in sync. We understand so much of the mechanics of this ADHD boat. Are you wondering what living wholeheartedly with your ADHD could look like? 
or if you already have a vision of where you want to be, but keep finding yourself spinning your wheels. What would be the impact if you could build a foundation to support your wholehearted life beside other adults with ADHD who just get it? If you're done with overwhelm and are ready to charge forward with your wildly important goals, then this is the group you've been looking for. If you're thinking about joining this group, there's really nothing like being with a bunch of ADHDers. And that we're a really remarkably diverse group of people. I was surprised at how varied everyone was, except for the one thing, which is that we all have ADHD. This group of strangers, we got together and we came into this thing thinking we were our own special kind of broken. But we grew together, uplifted each other, and saw how we're not broken and we're not alone. It's giving you the push to relax into it, to be gentle with yourself, experiment, tweak, laugh, cry, and just like accept and be more open. If you're thinking about joining this group, I've never liked the idea for myself of any kind of group coaching or therapy or support groups. I've always figured my difficulties were so severe that I needed the full attention of an individual coach or therapist. However, group coaching through ARC has been more beneficial than I possibly could have imagined. Start your new year with other growth-minded adults with ADHD for our 31st season of coaching and accountability groups by going to coachingrewired.com to add your name to our winter interest list and join us next week on October 27th for our next winter registration event. That's next week on October 27th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. Registration is by invitation only. So once you add your name to our interest list at coachingrewired.com, you will receive instructions on what you'll need to complete before you receive your invitation. Uh, you realize that like trying to find better tools isn't really just the only solution. It's finding a community, finding people and finding support uh, and learning how to ask for help and learning how to give help better. I think that really helps make a difference. If you're thinking of joining this group, I would say absolutely do it. You get out of this program what you put into it. Be ready to be open, honest and vulnerable with both yourself and your group. If you're thinking about joining this group, do it. If you're stuck and you know you need that extra push to help meet your goals but don't know where to start, start here. For me, the building project is trying to open the windows, increase the size of the windows. And when the size of the windows increase, more light gets in. And just as importantly, more of our light gets out. If you're thinking of joining this group, just do it. You cannot regret this. You will not regret it. You only have games. It's hard. I didn't know what to expect. It was just absolutely worth it. Find out more and get started with your pre-registration process so you can join us for our next registration event on Thursday, October 27th by going to coachingrewired.com. Make 2023 your year to shine. That's coachingrewired.com. All right, we are back. So Mike, right before right before the break, uh, I asked you to, I want you to share with us how you bend your business to your ADHD. You know, we, we've said here on the podcast, we say in our coaching groups that a big part of being successful with ADHD is you got to bend the world to you. So let's talk, we're, we're now talking about this in the realm of our businesses. So how have you bent your business to your ADHD? Oh, uh, well, the good thing about the business is what, what you just said before the break, you can make your own rules. My, this is what my wife said from the very beginning, my business, my rules. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, it starts with how do you want your business to be in order to serve you? For example, when we started, when my wife started 20 years ago, it was absolutely normal in Germany to have, for example, your phone number on the web page that everybody can call you, every potential client can call you. It was absolutely normal that you have an email on your web page and all this stuff so that people can reach you all the time. And this was the first thing we got rid of. No longer a phone number on the web page. No, this. Uh, no disturbing during work hours or something like that. And um, explain why. There are three reasons. One reason is all about ADHD. When you're in the middle of, let's say, writing an article and uh, someone calls you, it can happen that you get not into this article again for the rest of the day. Or ever. <laughs> or, or, or ever. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the second reason is 
we found out that there is no point being available all day long uh, because potential client might have an urge to call you out of a mood, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he or she has some true interest in your products or your services. And uh, being available all the time is sending the wrong signal out because if you signal that you are available all the time, I mean, what are you really shouting out into the world? What you really say is, I got nothing better to do. I'm sitting at my desk all day long because I don't have any clients because I'm not successful at all. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I mean, look at you. You you have this this tight process even for setting up an an, an podcast interview. You know, mm -hmm. you're not available for 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 everybody, anybody just in the mood of calling you. These, these are kind of small decisions. And from there, it's it's kind of, of uh, fracturalizing. It, it gets bigger and bigger. And uh, it, it comes down to how you make decisions, how you set up a sales process, how you do marketing, how you do administrative stuff and all this, all this thing. Also, like what you're willing um, and not willing to do, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And... Um, I mean, I was always good at learning. I love to learn new things. I can work through courses all day long, but that, does, that, that doesn't bring you anywhere. And this is how we do decision making today is you need to be able to figure out in with a little exercise within seconds, what part of your business you need to focus on right now. You know, a lot of people say, well, you need to track everything. You you have to uh, record all the numbers and all the stuff. But with ADHD, it's so easy to get lost in all these numbers. It's so easy to, to make a whole workday all about numbers without getting to indecision. This is just an example. We simplified the decision-making process by dividing a business in, in five parts. With a couple of criteria for every part, you're able to figure out what you need to focus on, whether it's lead generation or sales or retention part or delivery part whatsoever, you know. Well, if you start with it, okay, you might need 15, 20 minutes, okay. But with a little training, you do this in two minutes without any numbers. Say more, you know, because I am asking this, you know, last several months I've been working with a uh, business accelerator uh, program through a company called 2X. And so right now uh, they're having us build out these, a lot of these dashboards, which I have uh, very um, happily uh, delegated that to, uh, to Lisa, my, my assistant to actually like, set up the dashboard. Cause it, like the way I sort of am is I like, to, I value the data that sort of uh, research uh, can give you. I don't want to do the research though. Just show me the data, show me the trends. Let me look at something and be able to make decisions based on a, a dashboard that um, that makes sense. Yeah, so there's a weak point to numbers, to data. Okay. Because to be able to get to a decision out of these kind of information, you still need to interpret these, these informations. Mm -hmm. You still need to think about what all these numbers mean. Mm -hmm. You know, well, to be exact, you only need three numbers. Okay. One number is revenue because your revenue shows uh, how your business did yesterday. This is what, what comes the revenue that comes in. Then you need a sales number like the sales revenue. How many have you sold last week, for example? Because the sales number shows you how your business does today. And the third number you need is a marketing number. Usually how many leads did you generate last week? Because this number tells you how your business is going to do tomorrow. And with these three numbers, you are already better than 99% of all business owners out there. Because usually when you ask the business owners about numbers, how they did in sales or marketing, they give you this blank look, you know, <laughs> these numbers we track on a weekly basis. If you do this on a weekly basis, you, you always have kind of a pulse of pulse of your business. Yeah. 
So now you see tendencies in these numbers. When you do this on a weekly basis, you would see tendencies in these numbers. And to get these numbers, it's a matter of seconds. Everyone with ADHD can do this. Now, when it comes to deciding what you need to focus in, in your business, we divide it, as I said, the business in five different parts from lead generating to um, the retention, which means how often does the client come back for more? Let's take lead generation, for example. You just need to ask yourself, okay, how many leads do I generate? Is it critical? Will my business survive this critical number of leads or will I go bankrupt? Is it okay or is it more than I need? Because when you track these three numbers over a couple of months, then you know how many leads you need to produce this amount of sales to get this amount of revenue. You know that. Then it becomes quite easy. You know? Are you re are you referring to the, like some of these numbers with like the marketing, for example, as because we know that like revenue is a it's, it's a lagging indicator, right? It's that that's going to show the things we have done maybe over the last whether week, month, quarter, like the activities of that. That's the very last thing to basically happen other than fulfillment is the revenue is um, coming in. So look, yeah, at, when I talk about revenue, I mean the, the cash flow to be precise, the money that comes in into your bank account on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So you can look at your bank account and, and can check how much money came in last week. This is the number mm -hmm. we track. You know? Right. We're looking um, at those, those uh, KPIs, those key performance indicators. Like what are the key actions that uh, lead to higher uh, revenue, the higher sales? Right. So what are you, what are you tracking in terms of, of those kind of KPIs, those, those uh, key performance indicators? Well, these three numbers, how, how much money came in last week on okay. a bank account? How many sales did how, you what make? Are, what do you, tell me the difference between that for, for you? Because to me, I'm, I'm hearing a little bit that sounds kind of the same. So what's, what's the difference between mm, revenue and sales? Um, revenue and sales. The revenue is what comes in the, the these are the invoices that you send out the week before. The sales is how many handshakes did you have last week? How many contracts did you sign last week? It's funny because, you know, when, when I, we're doing registration for our coaching groups, it's funny because I had uh, I, uh, like two assistants ago, I had this, this issue where she was adding people who said like, yes, they're going to join to the sales page. I'm like, until we have their completed contract and their payments, that is not a sale. So you're, it sounds like you're counting those people who say yes, but you haven't seen the, the actual payment yet. So you're counting that as a sale, but not revenue. Uh, it's a sale when I have a signature, okay. to put it like that. You know, uh, of course, when you do the sales online, when you have order processing online with a payment gateway and all the stuff, then the sales decision and the sales transaction that leads to revenue um pretty much the same event but the thing is a sales decision or a, a buying decision happens usually before the transaction you don't have a transaction before the decision right but, but part of that is is making sure you have well qualified leads there right yes exactly over the last two decades we never had this kind of problem usually when the client says yeah let's do this then we do this like, is it in, in your business? Is it just you and your wife or do you have a, a team of uh, other people? Uh, we work with other freelancers. So with a small team of freelancers, for example, um, I'm about to do videos a lot right now and we have a video editor and uh, we have some help for social media channels. Occasionally we hire MBA. But the thing is, my wife and me, my wife was recruiting manager responsible for Europe, Middle East and Africa before she founded the business. And I was um, district manager for a grocery uh, store chain in Germany with uh, 10 grocery stores. So we had our responsibilities to manage stuff and so on. And from this experience, we came to the conclusion very soon that we do not want many people around us. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hard, man. And I think managing a lot of people is, can be hard, but I also think if, if you're trying to manage everything yourself, I think that's even harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I studied business informatics, which, which really um, plays a big role right now because 
it's so crazy. You cannot imagine how much you can automate in your business. Share some things that people might not, people who maybe are starting maybe service-based businesses or maybe online e-commerce businesses. What are some of the things that people might be surprised by that you can actually automate? Yeah. One thing what people are really cannot believe until they see it, you can start a sales conversation completely automated. Yeah. A personal sales conversation. What, what tool you know, do you just use? Just a for question. That? The, the best thing is let's, a good example is because many of the listeners here probably have a website and, uh, and all these things. And then probably a lot of website owners offer this kind of freebie, this kind of lead magnet, you know, where people can, uh, leave their email address and get a PDF or a checklist or whatever in mm-hmm. return. A lot of people think about the email welcome series or something like that, but you can use this. I mean, there was someone on your website showing some interest, so much interest that he or she left the email address so that you can send something in return. Why not starting a conversation here? And it's so easy. All you need to do is sending out an automatic email, just asking a question. Hey, I saw you joining us yesterday. Welcome on board. And by the way, what kind of clients do you work with? It's a simple people question. People respond to that. It's, it's a simple question. Not, not 10 questions, just a simple question. One single question that urged them to respond. And then they answer with, um, you know, I'm, I'm in, in health management or I'm in logistics and I have this kind of clients, blah, 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 blah. And from there, you can ask the next question. Well, this is not automated uh, from, from that point, it's obviously. Just, it's systemized. You know? it, it's systemized, exactly. Because one business coach said to me, I need to understand one thing. Conversions happen in conversations. Mm. So all you need to do is initiate conversations with people, not with everybody. You have to have criteria to check whether if the uh, potential client is qualified enough to talk to him or her in person or why I assume conference or something like that. And when, so when you say qualified, um, what, what do you mean for you? Like, what does that mean? Well, the first qualifier is, does someone answer to this kind of question, to this kind of email? Is the person willing to engage in a conversation with me at all? This is the first qualifier. The second qualifier is, is this person friendly? Are you and, saying as, uh, as a entrepreneur, you can choose who you work with. And if someone doesn't come off to you as friendly, you're just like, no, thanks. And go on to the next person. Yeah. One of the big benefits. Yeah, yeah that's, absolutely. That's great. Yeah. Because when you're employed by someone else, you don't really get a choice that much of who yeah. you get to work with. Yeah. Um, and uh, the third big thing is, does this person need help and want help? Because I see a lot of people engaging with the wrong people out there talking to the wrong people just because it feels good or whatsoever and nice handful, nice little checklist, nice handful of criteria can do a lot here. Hmm. So what are some other things, uh, come back to the, the question from earlier about, uh, ways that, that, um, sort of online or service-based businesses can automate more of their processes. So you mentioned the, uh, sort of starting that, that sales conversation. Mm-hmm. What else? What else? Let's say someone is engaged right now with you and uh, once finally talk with you, you also can completely automate this process. There is no need to fill out a form where you respond via email. You can lead them into kind of a questionnaire to ask them the most important questions that you need in order to prepare for the, for the sales conversation and, uh, you can automate the whole booking process and you can prepare him for this kind of conversation. You can use the time between the booking of the appointment to the appointment. You can, ta- you can use the time in between to pre-sell, to send out stuff. So here I have some clients talking about us or I have this article you might be interested in. Or have a look at this, have a look at that, you know, showing them around like you would do, for example, in a, in a, in a 
at the car dealer. There's a couple of tools that you kind of uh, uh, you kind of mentioned that I think are no matter what, if you're doing anything where you have to interact with other people, um, which is most areas of business, you mentioned the the scheduling sort of automation. Uh, and there's a bunch of tools out there. So I I've been using uh, Schedule Once for probably over a decade. I I mean it is at the exercise of having to go back and forth with people over email to, to set a date oh, yeah. or something. I want to like poke needles in my eyes. Like, I'm just like, it is, I find it to be one of the most just like awful tasks. But like, so it's, so you set up everything ahead of time and drop a link. Here's, here's what, here's what's available. Find something based on what I've already determined to be available. You know, it's about ADHD friendly. I don't want to have conversations at 7.30 in the morning. So my converse, my calendar is not going to be open at 7.30 in the morning. I also don't want to have conversations when my meds were off in the evening. So I'm not going to have that open in the evening. How do you do it? We use also a tool. We use Calendly. Calendly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and there you can set up the times and you can integrate your Google Calendar, you know, so, and, and so that Calendly knows that you already have an appointment and, uh, at this time and uh, so that you're not available. Um, but from what you just said, there's also another aspect to it for, from, from, for me. Not that I not only don't want to do this back and forth via email. The problem is when a client, a potential client looks good, you know, when you feel, well, there could something good coming, you know, then with ADHD, you have this tendency to say, well, you know what, this contract is far important to me. I book him at 7 a.m. anyway. And uh, with with a online booking tool, you prevent that kind of behavior. That's a great point. That's interesting. So with the, the coaching program that I've been uh, working with, when they're talking about fulfillment, so one of the best, like, sort of, in a sense, indirect forms of marketing is to just ensure that your fulfillment is as high quality as possible to create raving fans, right? And part of how you do that is people who you don't think you could serve really well to let them know that so they don't sign up for your stuff, right? Because it's like at 83 Wire, we're not here to serve everybody. We have a, you know, this... Uh, avatar of like who we know we tend to serve best, right? And it's not everyone. No, it's not. Right. And I think by doing that, we're going to, it's a better s- scenario for everybody from, from our coaches, you know, to, to our, our clients. Yes, and members. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Having this criteria is, is one important thing to know exactly who is your perfect client. Absolutely. All right, let's take one more quick break. And uh, when we come back, let's keep talking about how we can bend the world to our ADHD-friendly business. So we will be right back. It's ADHD Awareness Month. So if you're looking for a full immersion experience into ADHD, come to Texas. The 2022 annual International Conference on ADHD is coming up November 17th through the 19th in Dallas, Texas. I'll be co-presenting with ADHD Rewired Coach Kat Hoyer. We'll be talking all about accountability. There's nothing like being with hundreds of people with ADHD all under the same roof. I was able to get listeners of ADHD Rewired a 15% discount off conference registration. Go to ADHDrewired.com slash ADHDCon2022, but be sure to leave off the www and keep it all lowercase. Don't ask me why, it just appears that it only works if you do that. Or if you Google ADHD Conference 2022, when you're at checkout, use the promo code ADHDrewiredcon2022. And if you're driving and wondering how the heck you're going to remember that, check the show notes for that link. Did you know that every episode of this podcast has show notes right in the app you're listening to this on? Anyways, it's November 17th through the 19th. It's the International Conference on ADHD. And I hope to see you all in Texas. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from you. If you are listening to this right now and really finding value in this episode, don't forget to hit subscribe or follow. 
Next week, I'll be joined by David Greenwood on the podcast to talk all about overcoming burnout. So hit that subscribe, like, or follow button in your favorite podcast player so you don't miss next week's episode or all of our episodes that come out every single week. Then if you want more ADHD, relatable stories, and helpful tips, check out the rest of the ADHD Rewired podcast family, including Hacking Your ADHD with Will Curb, ADHD Essentials with Brendan Mahan, and ADHD Diversified with MJ Siemens. Find this show and all of our shows on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network by going to ADHDrewired.com slash podcast network. And the ADHD Rewired Podcast family is growing. We are in the works right now to launch two new podcasts by the end of this year. So keep tuning in to learn about those podcasts and we will let you know when those launch. Then every second Tuesday of the month, join me and the ADHD Rewired team for our monthly live Q&A. Our next monthly live Q&A is on Tuesday, November 8th at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. The best way to listen live and to interact with us and other listeners is to join us on Zoom by going to ADHDrewired.com slash events. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this show and all of our shows. Your support means the world to us. Hey, it is still ADHD Awareness Month, so help spread ADHD awareness by sharing this episode with someone who you think would benefit from hearing it. Discover more from ADHD Rewired by going to ADHDrewired.com. That's ADHDrewired.com. All right, we are back. We got about uh, five minutes here left. So what are some of the other whether it's automation tools or it's other tools that make having an ADHD business not just easier, but fun? Uh, I liked the picture of a well-oiled machine. Okay. A picture for a business. And uh, this is this is what I'm aiming for. So I'm looking for tools who integrate with each other very well. So for our tasks and project management, we use ClickUp because I'm a big fan of not having too much tools. With ClickUp, you can do a lot. For example, we have our whole documentation right in ClickUp and don't need an extra tool for it. It uh, works well with all the other tools like Calendly or we use Active Campaign for marketing and email marketing. And since a while, I'm playing around with Make.com, former Integromart. What is it? Make, Make.com? Make.com. It's, it's better known as Integromart. They got this new name recently. You can, it, it's kind of like Zapier, okay. but a bit eye-friendlier okay. and you can drag and drop your processes and your tools together. Okay. I mean, Zapier is a powerful tool. Yes, 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 exactly. And, and it does pretty much a lot of the things Zapier does just in a bit another way. But the, the, the reason why I use uh, Make.com is the people at Make.com use ClickUp as their project management. So they have a lot of integration when it comes to ClickUp, okay. naturally. Okay. You know, um, this is what we use to automate our business or to, to do a lot of our automations. Other tools I use is Workflow just for idea generation for outline of coaching programs or training programs for, for, for company clients. And, uh, I would say that, yeah, Evernote for note taking. So yeah. it's just kind of a second brain. I feel, I feel like I haven't heard a lot of people still using Evernote. You know, the, Evernote used to be the thing that everyone talked about and used. And I don't, I don't feel like I hear about it as much. To be honest, I was a bit fed up. I wanted to change last year and I played around uh, with uh, OneNote from Michael by Microsoft. I played around with other tools, but I came back to Evernote because it's still quite powerful. I, I'm not the biggest fan of Evernote, but I wasn't able to find a tool that better suits me right now. Yeah, for me, I found that Google Docs just seems to do what Evernote did. I just like the searchability of, you know, so I just start typing in words in the search and it's, so I don't have to worry about like saving things in a really organized way. Although that doesn't hurt to do that. Um, you know, I don't always do that. And so knowing that, all right, uh, 
what what words that I probably used in this document and mm-hmm. it finds it. Cool. Like if I kept finding with Evernote that I would like I would get logged out and then there would be other issues and then it was like I try to share a document with someone and then they need to have Evernote. That's that's a big thing. I mean, when I say that's uh, these are the tools that we use, then I mean that we use. It doesn't mean that everybody else should use them as well. You know, everyone has to find their own tools. I, I mean, that's that's the good thing about uh, these times. There's plenty of tools out there that fits um, almost everybody. Yeah. So when, Mike, when you're working with with uh, clients, like who are kind of your ideal uh, clients that you work with? Mm, we have two businesses to be precise. One where we give sales training to so larger companies, and here the perfect clients is a middle sized company, IT company, IT or software company with a sales team, with a dedicated sales team. And then we work with uh, small business owners, preferably consultants, coaches, trainers who work B2B. So consultants, coaches, trainers who work with, who work corporate, who work with company clients, because this is where we come from. This is where our expertise is in in sales. And so when you're working with, uh, um, these clients, what, tell me what you're doing with them. Uh, with small business owners, they usually come to us because uh, what, what they quite often say is what you have looks so structures. I want the same for me. You know, we work especially on marketing and sales processes, also on systems. But when you talk about the sales process, you already talk about the sales system. Marketing and sales is the most important function of a business anyway, with innovation. Uh, marketing and innovation, these are the most two most important function of a business. A lot of are just costs. It's not what I'm saying. It's was what Peter Trucker said. Um, this is what you work on with clients. And we help them to generate leads, yeah, to make sales predictably. So that s- sustainable, predictable, reliable. So that you know exactly when I do this or that, I get probably around this number of leads. And from this number of leads, I probably get this number of sales and so on and so on. So what, what we do is we kind of choreograph the, the, the sales process. So you're really helping people build systems. I mean, and that's so much of what ADHD management is also about is how do we build systems that work for us, that scaffold the challenges that we have, whether it's bringing in you know, additional support, you know, hiring uh, other staff, getting training on using different kinds of uh, automated tools, um, but it's about building the systems. Uh, you mentioned earlier about, you know, having your own rules. Like, yeah, like having rules is a huge help for a brain that sometimes can have a hard time with having to make decisions all the time. Yes, yes, exactly. Your website, SuccessfulADHDEntrepreneur.com. Exactly. What else would you like to share uh, with ADHD Rewired listeners before we uh, wrap this one up and say goodbye? Well, I'm just about to set up a little YouTube channel with the same name, ADHD Entrepreneur. You can find me on LinkedIn under my name, Mike Lakeys, and also under ADHD Entrepreneur if you want. Excellent. And we will get links uh, posted on the show notes for this episode. Mike, thank you so much for uh, for chatting with me. It was good to uh, kind of reconnect with you. It's, it had been been a while, so it's good to see that things are going really well and uh, and you know on your side of the planet over there. Thank you so much for having you. It really was a pleasure to talk to you after all these years. After all these years, so what is it? Almost ten o'clock p.m. over there now. Yes, around. Well, have a wonderful, restful rest of your evening, and uh, and we'll keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you. This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find timestamped summaries and additional resources for each episode. Apply to join our free and secret Facebook community. Learn more about our award-winning intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. Join the Adult Study Hall virtual co-working membership community. 
find all the other podcasts on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content that you won't hear anywhere else. And use the search tool to find episodes on specific topics. You can do all of this at ADHDrewired.com. While you're there, click on the Patreon button. If you are a regular listener, consider making a monthly contribution by becoming a patron. If you are able to financially support my work, it would mean a lot. This show is free to you, the listener, but it's not free to produce. Plus, patrons get cool perks like ad-free episodes and access to recordings of coaching calls and $25 a month patrons. And join me once a month for a group coaching call. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tibbers. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ADHD Rewired. If you're a coach, therapist, or related professional, connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash Eric Tibbers. Subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube to see selective interviews and other videos I've made. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends, family, your therapists, your coaches, doctors, siblings, parents. And if you, your coach, therapist, doctor, or ADHD support group leader would like a pack of podcast postcards to hand out, you can request those at the website, ADHDrewired.com. If you are a member of Chad, Ada, or any other ADHD support group, please be sure to tell them about this show and all the shows on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. And if you really loved this particular episode, please hit share on your podcast player. I'm only one person, and I do count on you to help spread this message. One of the biggest things that you can do to support this podcast and help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts or any other app that supports reviews. And don't forget to hit subscribe so new episodes are automatically pushed to your favorite podcast app. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Here is my list of must-listen-to audiobooks updated July 2021. Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, attached by Amir Levin and Rachel Heller. Atomic Habits by James Clear. The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Crucial Conversations by Carrie Patterson. The Coaching Habit by Michael Stainer. The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Rest by Alex Sujong Kim Pang. The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Make It Stick. The Science of Successful Learning by Peter Brown. The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics by Dan Harris. Change Your Questions, Change Your Life by Marilee G. Adams. I always recommend to my coaches and admin that they read that book. The One Thing by Gary Keller, a required reading for all of our coaching group members. Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Baden. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. And if you're looking for something a little bit more magical, I have fallen in love with the Harry Potter series and the narrator, Jim Dale, is amazing. And of course, if you haven't yet boarded the Brene Brown bus, all of her stuff is great. Starting with Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, and The Power of Vulnerability. And if you're an entrepreneur or leader, be sure to check out her book, Dare to Lead. Do you have something that you would like to share? Click on the podcast tab at ADHD Rewired. Click the button to be a guest at the top of the page and schedule a 15-minute interview. This is Eric Tibbers reminding you to keep learning, growing, and connecting. Self-care is not selfish. No matter what you get done or don't get done, you are still enough. And no matter how hard it feels, we can do hard things. And we don't need to do them in the hardest way possible. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.